You are an essential part of a perfect social body. Everybody in their place. Everybody happy now. The book Brave New World was written in the 1930s and yet it's still describing something that we relate to. It's a utopian world, but it's really about, well, what kind of dystopia does that create inside? There's two worlds, the Savage Lands and New London. The Savage Land, people are truly free, but they have nothing. New London, everybody feels like they're getting everything they want when in fact they're being told what they want. In New London, everybody's put into a class system that's really strict and conditioned to make them feel that that class is exactly where they should be. Everyone has a place, everyone has a function. Everybody happy now. In the new world, monogamy doesn't exist, love doesn't exist. That will create jealousy, that will create possessiveness, that will create secrecy. People self-regulate. They take a pill called Soma, and it'll target whatever you're deficient in and buoy you up so no one ever feels any sort of negative sensations. No one questions the way the world is run. It just is, and everyone's perfectly happy with that. When you meet John, he's stuck in the Savage Lands where there's none of the luxury, none of the ways that New Londoners have of keeping themselves in good moods. This can't be how you people feel. Welcome to the real world. He's the person who hasn't been taking these drugs. He hasn't had that conditioning. He hasn't been put in this clear societal role. So when he actually gets taken to this crazy new London world, I think one of the things that John does is start poking holes a little bit. Maybe there's something missing when pain is gone. We're gonna die here! I might as well have a drink. This has an opportunity to take people on a journey and really challenge some of their existing beliefs. It's really not about the future, it's really about our world. Brave New World is provocative. It's energetic and it's fast and it's gonna be absolutely amazing. The scope of the show is so enormous. We have world-class filmmakers. I mean, it's unreal. Every time I get to a set, I think, you didn't need to do all of this and I'm so glad you did. This was an opportunity to revisit such a great book. The show, in many ways, it mirrors the book, but it reflects where we are culturally today. The way that the world is painted in the script was something that really knocked my socks off. All the aesthetics of the show and the design of it are just magnificent, but also interesting as far as the storytelling. This was supposed to be a city designed by an artificial intelligence. So we actually did quite detailed layouts of the buildings and then that would influence really the way that they looked. We were inside one the other day that was like being on the inside of a whale, like seeing the ribs, it was enormous scope. It's all very authentic, very real. I've never experienced a costume department like on this job. The wardrobe is incredible. It's iridescent, materials put together in the most beautiful way. It feels 3D. Mm. No? One of the biggest things you get with Brave New World is the level of visual effects. The whole thing is just kind of visually incredible and the whole look of the show is gonna be, it's different. I think the show will feel somehow grand and also intimate at the same time. The cast is bananas. I've been so lucky to work with such amazing talents. When I read it, I loved the story. I couldn't picture it. It was almost too big. That's something that really drew me to it. And I'm so excited to see how it comes together. You just need to embrace this place and let it be wonderful. Aldous Huxley imagined a world where people would be so pharmacologically numb, so sexually stimulated, so distracted by the superficial and ephemeral moments of life. And I think parts of our culture have drifted towards his prediction. The way that David and all the other writers have translated Huxley's ideas into this story felt really profound and really pertinent. And the question that it kind of poses is what it really means to be happy. Quite frankly, my friend, if you're not happy, you're nothing at all. 
The story in itself is, I think, really timely. It gives us a view of a society that is not completely different from our own. Our society today, we like to put a Band-Aid on things without actually looking at the root of the problem. Soma is the pill that keeps you on this beautiful balance. The idea of an order and a pill to make you happy and taking away some of our choices. You're going to take the recommended actions and you are going to feel better. I think it's something quite appealing to a lot of people today. Huxley was seeing into the future this world where we could just entertain ourselves. We can get so good at making any kind of discomfort or pain go away. You know, he imagined a future where you wouldn't have to ban a book because no one would care to read one. And why would you need to? There's just so much else to do. And if Huxley was writing about that in 1932, and we have continued to go closer toward that, you really start questioning things. People have no idea how good you have it. Sometimes I think I want to be unhappy. But when I think about Brave New World, it kind of captures this idea of an unknown and a certain amount of hope that we're going to get it figured out. The inability to conform is always interesting. To see humanity burst through, that's what makes the show so exciting. Okay, stay with me as I have some cool behind the scenes trivia. Stop motion has featured prominently in famous science fiction films. Two of the Robocop movies feature the stop motion technique at work and the finale of the first Terminator feel was done with stop motion. Now, do you like my shirt? You can get one for yourself in the shop under this video and remember to click here below to subscribe for more great content.